Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. Today we will have our lesson number 78 in our series of vocabulary words, day number 78. Let's get going. The very first word we have actually is a, it's a term actually, it's a mathematical term and uh, we'll, 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 we'll learn it. The word is, the term is an asymptote. What is an asymptote? As M tot. Asymptote is an upper limit on the curve, the highest value that a curve can achieve. That the line that indicates that upper limit, that line is called an asymptote. Let's we'll see it in the graph here. Say for example we have a curve, we have a line here, this, this line has an equation of y equal to 3. That's the, that's the equation of this line here, and here is this curve. It's going to get closer and closer to 3, closer and closer to 3, but never quite touch it. it will, this curve that we just drew will reach 3, will reach 3, how? This curve here will eventually touch the value of 3, how? We need an adverb. What's the adverb of an asymptote? Asymptote is a noun. The adjective of asymptote is asymptotic. 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 That's the adjective. And what we need here is an adverb. There you go. Asymptotically was the only reason why we wanted to cover this word. That's how you will speak. You will say that this curve will reach 3. This curve that we just drew here, this red curve will reach 3. And then at the end, of course, to finish our sentence, we need an adverb. How will it reach 3? It will reach 3 asymptotically. Asymptotically. That's all. Otherwise, a straightforward term. Most people will know asymptote. Uh, they will come across in mathematics. The, word, the, the connection that they don't make is that it's a mathematical term, but it's also used in English language. And when it is used as a term in the English language, of course, it becomes a part of speech. It's a noun. Well, if it's a noun, it must have an adjective. Adjective asymptote is asymptotic. Or asymptotical. Or asymptotical. They're both acceptable, equally acceptable. And the adverb is asymptotically. Let's go on then. We're going to move on to the next word. The next word we have is... Let's put it right underneath here. Semantics. C. Man. Ticks. Semantics. It's a noun. And even though it has an S at the end, it has an S at the end, semantics, the word semantics, even though it has an S at the end, semantics is used with a Singular word. It's a term from linguistic. It's a term from linguistic. And what does it mean? It just is semantic simply means the study of words, the study of words, phrases, expressions. Their historical backgrounds there. Historical backgrounds. These expressions that we have, that we have in the language, in any language, they must have originated somewhere, somehow, some way, by someone. And there are people who study just that, linguists. And in linguistic, the branch that studies this part of the language, that is the origin of the expression, 
words, phrases is called semantics. But keep in mind, it is to be used with a singular verb even though it ends in even though it ends with an S. Semantics. By the way, L-I-N-G is the typical abbreviation you will find in the dictionary. In the dictionary, if they start out giving you the meaning of a word like I just did with the L-I-N-G in the parentheses, does the abbreviation for, let's make a note of it, linguistic. Again, linguistics also ends in an S. Let's move on. The next word we want to learn is, so linguistics is, is this is the branch of a branch of social science here, where we study the languages and their origins and so and, uh, and and we compare the different languages and how they came about, and fa different families of languages and so forth. Well, one particular branch of linguistics that deals with the origin of expressions is called semantics. But it can also be used more loosely. The word semantics can be also be used more loosely, and typically it's used in a sarcastic tone, in a very, very uh, annoyed tone. When somebody, when you say something or when you write something, and somebody is very picking, very being very picky about the terms that you employ, they say, "Well, you said noon. You didn't say around noon. You didn't say before noon." Well, it's a matter of semantics. You're just being annoyed here. It's just a matter of semantics. In other words, you're being, you're being, being very nitpicky about the precise words that were used. It's just a matter of semantics. Or if they tell you we're not, get, we're not going to get into the semantics of the things, they're telling you, I'm not going to discuss with you, to you the precise definition of the words. You know, you understood damn well what I said, and that's what it is. I'm not going to stand here and deal with you with the precise meanings of the words. We're not going to get into the semantics of the terms. Do you understand? The next word we're going to learn is parlance. Again, a noun, parlance. Parlance is a way of speech, a way of speech, a dialect that is the way some a language is spoken in a certain reason, and that's called a parlance. A particular way of speaking. A particular way of speaking. For example, or it could also again be used very loosely by, for example, one might so one might speak of one might speak of legal parlance. And when we use the term in that sense, legal parlance, we're talking about legal terminologies. We're talking about legal terminologies. We're talking about legal jargon. We're talking about legal vernacular. Vernacular, parlance, jargons, these terms mean that a particular way of speaking in a given field, in a given discipline. If the two doctors are talking to each other, if the two doctors are talking to each other, and a car mechanic happens to be sitting in their office because these doctors are discussing the mechanic's condition, the mechanic, car mechanic has just come in here for, for his, for his uh, health examination, and the two doctors are discussing among themselves between themselves or other, there's only two of them, as to what is wrong with the mechanic. The mechanic is not going to understand most of the things the doctors are saying to each other because they're employing medical parlance, medical terminologies, medical jargon. They're employing their own particular vernacular uh, that they have in their field. Now, uh, now the, the roles can reverse. If the next day, if the next day, one of these two, one of these two doctors ends up in the very same mechanic's garage because something is wrong with his car and now if this mechanic is talking to one of his colleagues as to what is wrong with the doctor's car the doctor is not going to understand what the mechanics are talking about because again because they're employing their own vernacular their own jargon their own terminologies their own parlance 
If you recall, we have already learned the word. The reason we are not going to cover the reason I'm not going to cover the word jargon and vernacular. For those of you who have been watching the series in, in, in the proper sequence, you will recall that we have learned these words on day number 34. Day 34, we learned we learned both of those words, and therefore we're not going to cover them again. Let's move on. If you're interested, just type in vocabulary words day 34 along with the whichever test that you're preparing for. The video will pop right up. For example, if you're preparing for GRE, just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day number 34, and the video will pop right up. Let's move on. So that was parlance. The next word we're going to learn, it's a very simple word. Question is, then why do we bother with it? Question is, then why do we bother with it? Well, there is a reason for it. You will see in a second. You just have to be patient. As you know by now, no matter how simple the pronunciation might be, we always make a point of writing it down. Always, always, always. Idiom. What's an idiom? Of course, you know what an idiom is. An idiom is a particular set of words that have a particular meaning in a given language. And if you were to try to translate those words that are put together in that sequence, uh, if you were to translate uh, word for word in a different language, it will lose all its meaning. It will have no meaning in the other language. Do you understand? Set of words. Well, I'm not going to write all the definitions. You can... Group of words. Group of words that have particular meaning in a given language. And if you were to translate it as I said word for word, it will lose all its meaning in the other language. It will have no meaning. For example, for example, uh, for example, there's an expression, idiom here, knock it off. Now what does it mean in English language if you tell somebody, knock it off? That means stop it. You know, it's annoying me. You're bothering me. Stop it. Okay? Just knock it off. Well, you can't translate. Try translating in, your, in some other language, word for word, and you will see that it will have no meaning. You, you can't do that. Uh, rather than uh, neither this nor that, to a great extent, for all I know, these are, these, are, these are idioms, these are idioms, and therefore they cannot be translated, most of them. As I said, the reason why we're covering this word, it's a very simple word, is because what I have found, what I have found through experience is that even though people know this word, idiom, and they do understand that it's a noun, can you tell me the adjective of it? What's the adjective of idiom? Adjective of idiom is idiomatic. It changes the pronunciation. Idiomatic is pronounced idiom, idiom, e, id, e, um, idiom, and id, idio, mat, idiomatic. Don't confuse the word idiomatic that we just learned with the word idiotic. Idiotic means to behave like an idiot. Do not do that. That will be a pretty darn idiotic thing to do. That would be a pretty idiotic thing to do if you were to confuse the word idiotic with the word idiomatic. Idiomatic, idiotic. What's the, what's the adverb of it? The adverb would be, adverb would be, idiomatically. The adverb would be idiomatically. You understand? Idiomatically. For example, if I tell you that I would like to look, if I tell you that I would like to look on it, well, what's wrong with that sentence? I would like to look on it. Well, that's not that's not idiomatically correct. It is not idiomatically correct. It's a wrong idiom. We do not say look on something, we say look at something. I was looking at the picture, I was not looking on the picture, I was not looking uh, on the picture or something else, it's looking at the picture. Do you understand? Because it's an idiom. 
That's all it is. I'm looking at it. So the adverb is idiomatically. Let's go on. I know we go at a very leisurely pace, but that's just the way it is. We're not in a hurry. The next part we want to learn is shear. It's an adjective. What does the word shear mean? Shear means pure. Un Diluted, undiluted. If you dilute something, it's weak. It's no longer strong. It's no longer pure. If you if you have milk and if you add a glass of water in it, it's diluted. It's no longer pure milk. It's been diluted. It is. It is no longer pure. It is now adulterated. Sheer means adulterated. We learned this word on day number 75 without without impurity what does it mean what does it mean to adulterate to adulterate adulterate means to make something impure to make something impure if you if somebody tells you that this milk is adulterated that means this milk is no longer pure this ring, this gold ring that you just gave me, this ring of gold that you gave me, is not actually gold, it is adulterated, it's, it's, it has something else in it, some other metals is in it, it's not 100% gold, it's not, uh, it's not what it's supposed to be, it's been adulterated. And from the word adulterated, if you want to put the prefix un, it becomes unadulterated. So if adulterated means not pure, then unadulterated means pure, sheer, pure, unadulterated, undiluted, without impurity. From the word adulterated is where we have the uh, from the word adulterated is what we have the word uh, ad adultery. Adultery is so called because if one commits adultery, the marriage is no longer pure. The vows that you took there they have uh, they have been violated. They are no longer pure. You have made your marriage impure by because it's adulterated because by committing that act. That's why it's called adultery. You understand? The reason I wanted to learn this word, the reason I wanted to learn this word is because this word. One would hear in many different contexts. One would talk about, for example, I'm going to put a few of them, not all of them. For example, one might talk about sheer happiness, sheer, sheer laziness, sheer laziness. Well, you started that project uh, three months ago, I know. Well, how come you didn't finish it? I didn't finish. I didn't finish. It was sheer laziness was the reason. Sheer laziness. I was just feeling lazy. I didn't feel like doing any work. I didn't feel like working on it anymore. It was not that I ran out of money. It's not that I didn't have the time. It's not that this or that. It was sheer laziness. It was what? It was sheer laziness. I got I got this question wrong out of sheer sheer stupidity. You see, that's an idiom. Out of out of stupidity. If you were to say that I got I got this question wrong with stupidity or by stupidity, it wouldn't work. It's not with stupidity, it's not by stupidity. The correct idiom is out of stupidity. I got it wrong out of sheer stupidity, out of pure stupidity. If you were to say by stupidity, that will be idiomatically incorrect. How will it be incorrect? It will be idiomatically incorrect. That's the adverb you'll have to use there. Idiom, idiomatic, idiomatically. Idiomatically incorrect. Sheer stupidity, sheer luck, sheer luck, or sometimes you hear people say the sheer dumb luck. Sheer dumb luck. I got this question right out of sheer dumb luck. I met I didn't mean to do that, I didn't mean to write that, but it turned out that what I wrote down was correct, but that's not that's not what I was talking about, that's not what I was thinking of. It was a dumb luck on my part. It was sheer dumb luck. It was sheer courage. It was sheer courage that I walked up to her and talked to her, spoke with her. It was sheer courage. It was pure courage. Sheer incompetence. Sheer 
Let's put it in a capital letter so we know how to spell it. Competence. Competence is a noun of competent. If you're competent, that means you can do it. He's a competent carpenter. Don't worry about him. He's a competent mechanic. He, he knows what he's doing. He is very good at it. He knows what he's doing. He's, he, he's not... He, He's not, uh, he's not new, he's not novice, he's not, he's not, uh, he's not inexperienced, uh, he's a competent mechanic. On the other hand, somebody who does not do the job properly, we say he's incompetent. He is incompetent with a T. The noun will be competence. So here we said, I blew this project, I, I blew this question out of sheer incompetence. I was incompetent. I did not do my job properly. One talks about sheer coincidence. Sheer coincidence. Boy, how did you find this book? I've been looking for it for two weeks. Where did you find it? How did you find it? Oh, it was a sheer coincidence. I was uh, I was standing there by the shelf there, and I happened to look at I happened to glance at it in the library. It was right there, staring in my eyes. Uh, it was sheer coincidence. I wasn't looking for it. I found it through sheer coincidence. By sheer coincidence. So here we go. So we have sheer happiness, sheer laziness, sheer stupidity, sheer dumb luck, sheer courage, sheer incompetence, uh, sheer coincidence, could be anything. It just means pure coincidence. That's all it means. And that will be the end of our lesson for today. Okay? Bye now.